Hey, how's it going, NV? This is just a quick and dirty introduction into the verse language. What is it? Should you learn it? And then I'll show you a little bit of how to get started with it if you're so inclined. So to get started with it, you just need to open the Unreal Editor for Fortnite. So we'll just click on that. And that just takes a minute to load up. I'll leave a link to what you're seeing in the background here in the description because this I found this to be a very helpful article. Actually, Unreal's done a really great job with the documentation on this. I would like to say that I don't think verse is that easy of a language to learn. And it's so much tied to the SDK or the API within the Fortnite ecosphere. I'm not sure how much application it has outside of Real Editor. Let's talk real quickly about the verse language and if we should even learn it. And the question might come up is, do you need to learn verse to make games in Fortnite? And the answer is no, you don't. Do you need to learn verse to create really great games in Fortnite? No, not really. You can create perfectly fun, fine games without one line of verse code. So you absolutely do not need verse to make great games in Fortnite Creative. So you might ask yourself, well, what, what do I need to learn it for then? Well, they actually explain it right here. It says, Epic Games is continuing to develop the Verse API for Unreal Editor for Fortnite to enable more game-specific functionalities at this time. I think that's a very interesting phrase at this time. Verse is a good solution for one, complex interactions between players and the game world, two, precise control over when things happen, three, creating new game rules that would be challenging or impossible to implement with the creative tool set alone, and four, dynamic play based on the current state of a player or the game world. So unless your game is going to require these things, complex interactions, precise control, new game rules that would be difficult to implement, it might be challenging, but you could do it, or they say impossible. So it allows you to do basically more advanced game functions. But does that mean you can't create a fantastic game without Verse? No, you don't need Verse to create a fantastic game. You can create that with just the Unreal Editor alone. So I found that comforting to know that you don't need to learn Verse to create a game in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. But if you're looking to create something that's very sophisticated or complex or something that you can't do with the current devices, then it might make sense to spend the time to learn it. So anyway, with all that explained now, let's kind of just jump into Unreal Editor for Fortnite and just take a look at what Verse is and how might we implement it if we wanted to implement it. We can just come into Island Template and go to a blank project and we'll just leave it called My Project G and go create. And it just takes a minute to load up. One thing that's important to know about Unreal Editor for Fortnite is it has all the creative device in it. I haven't counted them, but there's over a hundred of these devices. And using these devices and knowing a little bit about direct event binding, you can create perfectly fun, fine games in here. Actually, I think you can create some fairly complicated games with just these devices in here. There's things like a a player counter, there's a player checkpoint, there is a score manager, just goes on and on and on and on. There's a vending machine, <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's crazy how much stuff is in here, and just using these, there's a video player even in here, there's a video player, I mean, it just goes on and on, all the functionality there is, there's lock devices, there's item spawners, there's player spawners, there's customizable lights, there's collectibles. I mean, there's so much stuff here. You could just, I mean, I can't almost think of a game you can't create with all these devices. But let's say you did happen to need a device that didn't exist or there was some kind of game play function that you wanted to create, but you know, you didn't, it wasn't existing here as it is right now. Well, that would be really easy to do to create a Verse device. So Verse runs off a device just the same as all these other devices do. So it's not like Verse is something separate. It's actually its own device. So if you come up here to where it says Verse Explorer and you click on the name of your project, in this case it's called My Project G, 
all you have to do to create a diverse device is to right click and go add new verse file to project. And then it's going to say, it says right here, verse device, and then it wants you to give it a name. We'll just leave it called hello world. And here's initial code. It's already has some initial code for you, which would say hello world. Now you, it says create empty. If you don't want to start, you don't want this in there. You just start it with the create empty, but we're just going to go ahead and create. And that's going to leave this initial code in there for us. So we're just going to go create. And now what it's done, if we get out of here, out of this folder and we come into my projects and go into creative devices, it's created its own device. And if we drag it onto the scene, it looks like a computer console but this basically implements and compiles the whatever code we write. Well, how do we get to the code? We just have to double click on this and it's going to open a visual studio with our code. And then we just start writing the code. If we knew how to code in it, we'd start coding. Unfortunately, it's going to take some time to learn because it's so specific to the API that they mentioned here. So if we click here, it talks about if you're interested in the API or the verse API reference, we can click this. Here's all the modules. So we have to import these modules into our code in, a, in order to access functionality. So for instance, like if we wanted to generate a random number, we would have to add this module and then we could get a random float or a random int or shuffle values. But we'd have to import this random module to be able to do that. So what I thought might be fun today is just to show you how this works, how easy it is to, I'm kind of contradicting myself, but how easy it is to modify the code, I guess I should say, not necessarily to write the code, but how easy it is to modify the code. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do our own hello world, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and delete what's in here right now. And when we do, you notice we're gonna get an error right there, but we'll fix that an indentation will fix that. But we're gonna need to add two, two modules to our code up here. So to do that, I'm gonna just click one of these lines of code already. I'm just gonna select it and go Control C and then come down here and go Control V and Control V. So the two additional modules that we need is one's called verse.org colors. So we'll go colors. And then another one is colors. Forward slash named colors. Just like that. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to just add a couple lines of code now that we've added these modules. So now we can implement functions and abilities based on these all these modules that are imported in here. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to come down here and hit, I'm going to create a variable called message one, and then we go colon, and then we'll hit the brackets, uh, not the curly brackets, the square brackets. And this is a character value type. And then we just go equals and enter our text. And we enter this with brackets and say, hello world, I am trying to learn verse. And a colon. And let me see. Oh, this isn't. Uh, this is an uppercase here. This is lowercase. There we go. And now we can come in and hit spacebar three times to indent. We don't use the tab. And then there's just three lines of code we're going to write here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a variable named color red. And we hit colon. And we'll go color equals color equals and then it's color again and then we just have to put in the RGB values so we need the curly brackets for this 
and we'll go r colon equals the two five five point o comma and g colon equals zero point zero oops zero period zero comma and then b colon equals zero dot zero and that's our rgb values and then there's just two more lines of code we're going to write here and the next one is going to be called uh, duration or I'm sorry my duration and that's a colon and this is going to be of a float type equals and we're going to make this this is how long our message will be on the screen and we're going to say 30 for 30 seconds oh it's got to be a float value so point zero and then lastly, we'll just have it print to the screen. So we go print, and it's gonna be parentheses, and it's just gonna be message one. We can hit tab, and then we have to hit a comma, and then we put a question mark duration, and we use the assignment operator, colon equals my duration tab, comma, question mark, color, colon, equals, color, red, tab. And that's it. One thing you could do is start creating a library of all these things. So like this prints a message on the screen for 30 seconds, and you can assign the color and the change of the text. So you might just keep this as a, in your library of things that, you know, you're wanting to accomplish that maybe can't be done with other devices. So, you know, I know how to print on a screen now that's red that stays on the screen for 30 seconds. So there's that functionality. So once we're done with our code, modifying our code, we could go file and save that. And then we close that. And then we come into, back into our, editor we come up where it says verse and we build the verse code and then we got to go ahead and launch our session save everything and of course this takes time now because it's loading up our game into onto the fortnite servers so that we can actually play it and i guess once we publish it other people could play the game as well so this is kind of a time consuming aspect of things but I think the takeaway from this is that Verse is for advanced or more dynamic functions that you want to add to your game that you can't add with the existing devices. But I would say just go ahead and make your games in Unreal Editor for Fortnite. And if you see that, and you can start learning Verse on the side. And then if it turns out that, oh, you realize, you know, you want to create a device that doesn't exist or some functionality that's you can't really put together with the existing devices, then you can start using Verse. But do you absolutely need to learn Verse to make games? No, you don't. And I have a funny feeling that at some point they might come up with some kind of blueprint scripting for instead of using Verse. Because I know a little bit of computer programming. I know some Python and I know some C++, but I... I don't find this language that intuitive and it's so tied to the SDK, I mean the API, that I just don't know. I don't know if it's, um, you know, so we're still in the hub. I don't really want to be here in the hub. I don't think I need to be in the hub. So I guess I don't normally sit through this much of it, but it says that out the edit mode is downloading right now. But let me go back into... Let me just minimize this. You hit escape and minimize this. It just is the session still loading. So when I first came in, that kind of throws me off. So it's almost better just to hang out here and watch it load in and stuff like that. But okay, it's, it's done. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to go into Fortnite here. Oh, I got all these extra stuff on here. That's why it's making all that noise. So then if I hit start game, we should see our message appear up here in the right upper left corner. You see that? Hello world. I'm trying to learn verse. And then that message will stay up there for 30 seconds. So if you want to know, create a device that puts a message up like that on the screen, now you know how to do that. And is there a device that can do that? Yes, there probably is. But maybe not just like that, though. You know what I mean? So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. This And there, the message went away after 30 seconds. So anyway, I'm going to end the game. So anyway, that's all I had. This is a quick and dirty intro into verse. I hope you found this helpful. Take care. Have a great day. I'll talk to you next time.